I come from a nation that is one of the oldest anywhere in the world. Anyone know the first rule? The first rule within First Nations? Think about it in relation to the food, in relation to anything else. You don't be greedy. So you only take what you need. That's it. I'm Jodie Orcher. Um, I'm a ULRA Barkindji woman from Brewarana. Traditional bush foods are amazing. One of my favourites is lemon myrtle. I love our native raspberries. And the black apple that, that's in season at the moment. The senses and the tastes is so explosive that we can't believe that we don't use these things on our palate, like every day. It's like having a whole different range of food that you find yourself. And you only find that through engaging with Aboriginal traditional owners. So this is a Davidson plum. So, like most plums, you polish it to get the blue off of it. And then you split it in half and open it. It's a sweet, it's, it's got a sour, but it has a sweetness. Oh, it's delicious. I work in culture and heritage, and so I realised that there was not enough awareness about respecting the integrity of traditional customs. It's about access and recognition. The dispossession of, of land for Aboriginal people then um, took away that use and that plant and that that nutrition, that medicine. The macadamia nut, the lemon myrtle, is, is commercially used now. There's companies coming in, propagating, farming it, using it, making money off Aboriginal knowledge. Everywhere people are making um, uh, bush food books that are possibly not even Aboriginal and, and all these types of things. Bingalome is actually going to be the second biggest product for native foods in Australia very, very shortly. It's, a, it's about $70 to $150 a kilo. Very expensive. The majority of bush food companies and suppliers and all that kind of stuff in Australia are owned by non-Aboriginal people. A very small number of them are either in partnership with some Aboriginal people or have some kind of community engagement, unfortunately. I would like to see in the future people in the culinary world specifically buying from Aboriginal food service providers. I think they need to acknowledge who showed them that, um, where they got it from, what country they're on. That traditional practice has been passed down for ages and that's why they can eat it, you know, so they need to recognise those things. I would like to see Aboriginal people being able to propagate and farm their own foods in their areas where they are. Therefore, it's allowing them that community to keep growing, keep propagating and keep farming. If we can support that economic development for the community, we should. Over here is our at-back rub brisket. It's been going for about 12 hours. So, uh, it's all been spiked with uh, red wattle, red wattle, uh, paper bark, uh, and, and basically get the leaf and put it in the water. But this is, this is curry style, yeah. Aboriginal people, if you meet them anywhere, they love their country. We're very proud, happy people. And so we're happy to share our culture. People didn't want to know for a long time, but they, they want to know now. And so it is about permission and acknowledgement and recognition and everybody should be able to respect that.